Hi and welcome to this video. I'm Adrian from Tactical Project Manager and in this video we're going to look at a specific feature that you need to understand which is manual scheduling versus automatic scheduling. This is something you'll notice once you create your first project plan in MS Project. It has this distinction that you can set the task mode to automatic or manual scheduling. But what is the difference between the two and which one should you choose? That's what I'm going to answer in this video. So first of all, what is scheduling in project management? Well, scheduling is really the process of allocating your project work on the timeline. So which task comes first, which one comes second, which one comes third and so on. And Microsoft Project is a very powerful tool for scheduling projects. And as a result, you need to understand how scheduling works with this tool. So let's start with a very basic example. Um, this is for a house renovation project. So we have to do some painting of the interior and then we have to let the paint dry and afterwards we can furnish the rooms or put in the flooring or whatever. So the simple example will be with three tasks. So the first task is to paint walls and interior and this task takes let's say three days so 3d and we will start um, let's say on the 5th of February And then, so once the, the painting of, wall, of the walls, etc., has been done, then we have to wait for two days for the paint to dry before we can put up the furniture. So let's call it the drying phase. And this is takes two days. And then we have the furnishing phase. So furnish, furnish rooms which is again four days. Now, um, by default, Microsoft Project uses the manual scheduling. So what this means is I can really choose when a specific task should start and when it should end based on the, on the duration of the task. So the first, the first task, the painting, paint job, uh, takes us till Friday and let's say um, well the, the the drying phase now obviously has to come afterwards so let's say this is then Saturday and Sunday so now it assumes that um, we there's no work on on the weekend but this is just a, a dummy phase dummy task basically uh, letting the paint dry so this is finishing this can finish on Sunday so on Monday we can start with work but maybe we are not we are busy with other work on Monday so maybe we have to, we want to start let's say on the oops let's move to February oh sorry this is this is the wrong date I put here the wrong dates so now you can already see manual scheduling is is a bit tricky <laughs> because it doesn't give you the warnings. So this would be the 8th and 9th of February. Now it's correct. So let's say we start with the furniture on the, let's say Wednesday the 12th and it takes us four days so there's a weekend in between we won't work on on Saturday and Sunday so we will finish this four-day task on Monday the 17th so you can see I can really you know arrange the set the start date to whatever date you know I feel comfortable I can leave leave out a week that's no problem you will see it it just changes here the Gantt chart so this gap becomes larger as we further you know move move away the 
um, the furnishing task. So you, you have complete flexibility. Um, what we still can do even in the manual mode is to link up those tasks. So meaning to um, track the to, or to enter the dependencies. So the, the drying phase, let's start with the middle one. The predecessor of the drying phase is the is the task number three, so that the painting. And the predecessor of the furnishing task is the drying phase because we can only start setting up the furniture once the, the walls have dried and the floor is dried. So this is task number four. And now you can see these arrows, little arrows uh, being put here between the task and I can just move it a little bit again so that you can see here the task. So now we have this, this gap here in between. Here is just a weekend, this is fine, but here we have um, three four work days where business days where we are not working you know we have other stuff to do so this is a way how you can use manual scheduling and um, this the, the benefit is you have the flexibility so I can just choose here any any date uh, I want I can move out the the tasks or put them closer together I'm completely free with that um, now, the, the problem is we are in, in this case we are not optimizing our schedule for the minimum uh, project um, duration. So we are wasting a lot of time here um, because we are just defining the when each task should start. But normally in pro in projects, especially at the start, you want to have a, a clear overview, a clear idea of how to how to optimally arrange each task and to schedule each task task so the overall project duration uh, is minimized so we can complete the, the project as as quickly as possible yeah of course it can change later when when you have like people falling sick or tasks be moved so there will be uh, delays that's common but at least for the start you want to you want to optimize the project plan to have to have minimum duration and this is not this is not done when you are working in the manual mode yeah so now let's let's um take it take it the test or let's go with the automatic approach so let's just delete those entries here or we can have here the the dates entered now we can just remove that so we start at, at zero. So I can decide for each task whether it should be met automatically or manually scheduled. So now let's put everything to automatic. And what you have to do is here you go to this column task mode and you set it to auto scheduled. There are ways to, to, to do this on simultaneously for a number of tasks so that you, do, you don't have to do that one by one but not now as is for a simple example with the three tasks this should be fine so now the dates have again changed because it's just you know as I said automatic scheduling means MS project is optimizing the your project schedule for for duration so it starts right away so today's the 27th of December and it starts Oh, funny enough, it starts yesterday, <laughs> but you know it just starts right away, and it shows it makes sure that duration is minimized. So, what we want to do now, first of all, is uh, change the project start date. And for this, I go to pro the project tab and project information. Uh, and let's say the start date is. February 5th, 2020. The current date is right. So, and also what you can see here in this tab is schedule from. So you can choose whether you want to plan forward or plan backward. So now we are planning forward, meaning we have a defined start date and we add up our tasks and we link them together and MS project will tell us 
when the project is going to, to finish. There's another scheduling or another yeah scheduling strategy which is backward scheduling where we would uh, schedule from the, the the finish date. So it's like backwards. You have a defined end date where you have to be finished, you have to be complete with the project, and now you schedule backwards. So just because we're here in this tab, so I wanted to explain to you. But the normal mode is to plan forward. So this is fine. We start on Wednesday, the 2nd of February 2020, and we have changed the start date and we press OK. So now you can see it has. Uh, MS Pro Microsoft Project has, has put here the new dates and these are the, the Gantt charts. Notice they are still not in the right order. So um, we still have, and the order is not shown because we haven't entered the dependencies. So now again we enter here the predecessors. So the, the task that comes before the drying phase is the task number three. So we have to put here the three and you see it's putting here the arrow. And the other, the next one is task number four. So now this is what should, again, let's increase here the amount of days. And this is like two days. So you can change it flexibly. And notice that also when you, once you change the duration of a task, it will automatically update the start date or finish date of the, of the ta of the affected task in, in a color it's highlighted so you know that there's an automatic mechanism behind so this is how auto scheduling works and you can see here now there's a the different icon this blue rectangle which indicates um, automatic scheduling now the benefit is really that Microsoft project plans out your entire project completely automatically from start to finish with the goal of having a minimum project duration. And you can also enter like more like constraints. For example, you can upload your company calendar or you can upload the, uh, the like bank holidays in your country and Microsoft Project will automatically consider those like days off and plan your project around those holidays also and this is more advanced we're gonna we're not gonna look at this uh, here but i just wanna i just wanna tell you you can also plan resources in in microsoft project which means team members and like also machines um, which are dedicating their um, labor to the project and microsoft in the in the automatic scheduling mode Microsoft project will automatically consider the availability of resources and uh, yeah extend or, or schedule the tasks based on the availability of team members. So let's say if a team member is only available 50% um, in, in, instead of 100% then the task will like the duration of the task will double because the, the, the team member can only work like uh, fifty percent of the t of his or her time on the project. So this is all in the in the background. Microsoft Project will automatically schedule your project with respect to those constraints. And there are four main constraints that are being used, or factors that are being that determine how your project is being scheduled. And I have explained them also in the article, which is which covers the same topic on the blog and it's linked under the video. So automatic scheduling takes into consideration the project start date. So remember we changed the start date when we created the project. It also depends on the duration of the task, obviously, because as lo the longer a task takes, the longer the overall project will you know, stretch. But also the dependencies of tasks matters. So the order in which a task is being is being carried out or has to be carried out. And maybe some tasks are not dependent on each other. They can be executed in, in parallel, so they don't have an, uh, an impact on the critical path or the timeline. But some other tasks, they may have to be you know, done in a certain order 
and as a result they have an impact on the overall schedule and this is all taken into consideration by MS project and also as I mentioned like other constraints like your uh, national holidays or corporate calendar events um, like meetings whatever this can be factored in by with Microsoft project there's even a way to to maintain the calendar which um, Microsoft project uses but this is I'm gonna cover this in another video so let's go back to MS project so the question is which one which scheduling strategy should you use manual or automatic the thing is so first of all the default setting in Microsoft project is manual scheduling um, and I, I always recommend when you first start out with MS project you should you should familiarize familiarize yourself with the with the whole you know how you use MS project and for that I would just start with the manual scheduling strategy because you know you have the flexibility to to set the dates and you can you control the schedule basically um, whereas when you have the automatic scheduling enabled it's done you know automatically and you have to make sure you understand why why the the the, the schedule is is put up or set up in this way you have to understand the logic of Microsoft project and how the scheduling mechanism works um, so first start with manual but then once you have a real project you need that you need to plan absolutely go for the menu for the automatic scheduling mechanism because this is actually the benefit of having Microsoft project because it does all the it considers all the factors and automatically calculates these the project schedule for you so and once you have some experience with the the tool you will understand how the automatic scheduling works and um, you know how to maintain maintain the project in case of changes happening yeah okay so that's basically it so you can also one last note you can also set or define in MS project um, which scheduling strategy you want to use for new tasks so it can be set here at the bottom and then for any new task that you import and you that you create like it will automatically um, use the selected scheduling strategy so hope that was helpful and if you have any questions or if you like the video just post the feedback so i would be really appreciated thanks so much and take care